It's Shyamalan time again. Uh, <laughs> oh, you shut the fuck up. You wait. liked this movie when it came out. I remember when we left, I mean, that was one of the few times where I'm like, liked you know, did, is... did we see the same film with this? <laughs> liked is a bit of a stretch. <laughs> I loved the first half, couldn't stand the second half. But you still liked the first half! <laughs> I did. I, th I thought there was some great buildup in suspense, and I was hoping it would build to something, and then it never did. None of them talk right! The camera angles make no sense. Okay, no, 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 no. Okay, okay, no. But you, really? No, 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 no. Despite no, no, you, no, no, no. You shut your okay, whore okay, mouth. Okay. You say none of them talk right, and yet you came out of Unbreakable praising that freaking movie like crazy, and none of them talk right in that movie. I There's will. a whole conversation between Bruce Willis and Samuel L. Jackson, and I swear to God, it takes 40 fucking minutes when they could have had it done in, like, Two. Okay, there's two things with that film. Because the we pregnant get pauses no, no. between every Hold one of their words okay. goes on for at least 30 seconds. Okay. Go. So don't you dare, Mr. Raggedy Man. <laughs> Why'd you go to that reference? Thunderdome was on the other day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. It's, it's hard not to quote it, isn't it? Um, but, okay, a couple things with, with that movie. First of all, I think it's good despite itself. Uh, which, you're absolutely right about everything well, you said. I think said. it's better than Signs, I'll um, give you that. But... Second, uh, I think it's... Something I realized is that that... what And the reason I think that film works for the most part with that kind of talking is that it takes place after this horrible event happens and during a breakup and during a broken family... That makes a little bit more sense why they would be talking like that. Why so why does Samuel L. Jackson that talk that way? Well, he's not going to a He's clearly not all that. Yes, he is. His body is breaking up constantly. Oh, so that was the real comic book part of the movie about how, like, you always need a hero and a villain. The two people in the entire city who don't talk right found each other. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings me to number three. I think everybody has a film outside of Sixth Sense, a Shyamalan film, where they're like, you know, even though I know it has problems, there's something I still like about it. For some people, it's Signs. For some, it's The Village. Yes. And for, for some, me. it's Unbreakable. And for me, um, that was the first half of Signs. <laughs> and, the fact uh, that they didn't talk right didn't matter because you sat through Unbreakable somehow completely fine, and they all talked exactly like they do in Signs. It, it is harder to watch now, knowing his tropes. I, I will definitely say that. Uh, and, and I'm not going to act like it's not there. But we should keep the focus where it is, which is Signs. Um, uh. a, another film that... Again, I... I love it when this happens, because this is another one where people are like, YOU CAN'T TALK ABOUT SIGNS! IT IS A MASTERPIECE OF INCREDIBLENESS! YOU- YOU CAN'T! IT CHANGED MY LIFE, YOU CAN'T DO IT! And it's one of the most- It was either that, or like, a primal scream of, no! And it is like- I love it too much! So, so many people come up to me and say that's like one of their favorites, and the door routine is one of their favorites, and so many good points are brought up that they never saw before, and they love it, or even if they still like the movie, uh, they love the review. So the door and routine just came from us, that one funny, the only funny scene, what was it, Scary Movie 4 or 3, one of them. This is the time um, when, when Newsweek was throwing out things the next like, Spielberg. the next Spielberg. Yeah, and my favorite, but my favorite. Whenever you look at an issue of Newsweek, just remember the words, the next Spielberg. Next, next to, to Shyamalan's Shyamalan. face. And then put your Newsweek back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like anyone reads magazines anymore. It's a bit of a rag. <laughs> but, uh, but the big thing where I said, okay, something's going on with this dude now. Like, the fame's going to his head or something, is when they were interviewing him and he said, Ha! He actually wrote, ha, huh. no. But he said, I can I'd take... I'd kill if he said it exactly like that. Ha! <laughs> no, but, but he said, I can take Pokemon and make it symbolic of the Holocaust. That's how good I am. He I could. Know. It wouldn't be any good. No, no, but, but that's could. the thing. I'm like, <laughs> I don't think uh, this guy understands how this is supposed to work. Just because you could, you didn't sound like you'd be shunned. And, I don't know, for me... Again, we've talked about faith before, and we were both raised Roman Catholic and stuff, and, you know, there's definitely shit that's like, you know, God damn it, you idiot, you're, you're ruining this religion or whatever, and then there's the other stuff that's like, are taking it and pushing no it sense, to, though. yeah, and there, there, there are other people that can take it and really analyze faith and belief and, and the religion and stuff and really take it to new levels that's like, wow, that's fascinating, that's intriguing, and this is one of those times where it, it's written like a late high schooler who thinks they have everything figured out in terms of philosophy and religion and everything and tries to make this connection and there are a million things that don't make sense about it so I am totally fine 
with taking a story about aliens and making it symbolic about faith, but first of all, you gotta make it symbolic. You, you can't gotta, just have, you, hey, yeah. here's the fucking priest, here's exactly what I'm fucking saying, and we're literally well, gonna spell it out for you. Right you gotta too. make sense with it, yes! Um, Why did you kill the wife to have him leave the faith just to come back to the faith? Well, nothing has changed except you're down one wife! Well, so God just killed the wife! Well, and not only that, but let, his ways are mysterious. Yeah, <laughs> fuck those uh, mysterious ways. I, I don't care about the ways, the final result is what I'm looking for. And your final result makes no goddamn that, sense. That's God. how I, in my household, I always knew when I had won a religious argument, when my mom would say, the Lord works in mysterious ways. Because yeah. I'm like, okay, you've run out of it. You've got nothing. Got it. Like, that was always, like, the final, like, desperate straw to grasp. Like, we're not meant to understand. And I, I whatever. But <laughs> the, the problem, not only is it that, but so the wife dies and she says, swing away so that he can hit the aliens at the end, but let's go back and think about this. Had he just listened in the first place and gone to the lake where there was water, wouldn't have had to fucking worry anyway, right? <laughs> so it, it, none of it adds up. It makes any sense. The only thing I've discovered about the whole faith argument in this film is it's less of a testament to how successful Shyamalan was at doing a story about faith and how much people just really want to have faith in Shyamalan. <laughs> that's, that's, it, it really comes in, like, I've argued it to death, and, like, I'll, I'll get emails still occasionally from people who want to talk about it, and in the end, it almost always comes down to, that, well, but the Lord works in mysterious ways. Like, it's all based on this assumption. I'm like, yes, and you're assuming that God did this. Like, or that God had a hand in this. How do we know it's not just whatever? Well, because he had faith. and Okay, but that's him. Like, in the end, he's investing some sort of faith in this, and we have no idea. None of God had a play in any of this. Mm. Which, if you want to make the argument that's the brilliant thing about it, you can. I'm not sure that's Shyamalan's argument. If you want my opinion, a um, film that did this idea so much better, uh, a little-known movie uh, called Slumdog Millionaire. Uh, and they did this whole thing... <laughs> yeah, it's a little-known movie. No, that's... Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, but, no, but that's what I'm saying is that they took... Kind of the same idea that everything sort of has this path in this, this way, but they left it just vague enough and just open enough that you can draw kind of whatever conclusion you want from it. Maybe there is some sort of plan, and whether it's God, whether it's just, you know, the fates, whether it's this pattern that continues or whatever, you know, something is going on that has led, you know, to this turn of events through, you know, all this terrible stuff to something really positive. And I, I thought that film really dived into the nasty, uncomfortable stuff, but when it came back to, you know, that there is a plan and there is hope and stuff, like, it didn't feel... It felt forced in the right way. It felt like, hey, we know this shit can get really real, but you know what? Here's this little glimpse of hope that's not just a shining light. It's the little things in your life that you never thought would come back. They're not the quirks that obviously you're watching and you're like, well, this is clearly just a quirk forced, and it's probably going to come in later, like the girl with the water or whatever, or a lot of the stories they were saying in the past. Uh, you know, it was done so much better. It feels so arbitrary, like bad fairy tales, where it's like, and then this happened because this does this now. Like, yeah. it's just, it's just... No, decided. no, no, we'll get to that with Lady in the Water. The girl, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, Lady in the Water, I think, is the, the final, like death rattle of Shyamalan's, <laughs> like, it, 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 literally, it's like all of these things that have been building, and building and building, all of the inconsistencies in his tropes, like, just, just explode in some, like, nuclear fireball in, like, in the water. <laughs> it's like, it, it's like he pent all of it up, and then he, he like, just had a meltdown, like, <laughs> we're, we're, we're gonna do that one day, I, I have not gotten all the way through, I'm, I'm trying to space Nerf! out, I'm trying to space out the Shyamalan, there's, a. Uh... <sighs> There's just so much material, uh, but I, I gotta say, I've only gotten halfway through it, uh, cause, I see my wife and I were just like, let's watch a bad movie, like a really enjoyable bad movie. I saw oh, the ones, I heard this was bad, we, we only got oh, halfway through Lord. it, cause we were getting tired, I just said, okay, I, 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 in fact, I even said, I gotta stop now, cause I'm doing a review of this, and I just wanna save the material, cause this but Doug, is, Doug, this is amazing! Doug, did you get the subtle metaphor about criticism in that movie? Uh, you know, again, I'm only halfway through it, and already I got the fucking metaphor about criticism in that movie! <laughs> 
they're t- he's talking about people like us. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, um, okay. Uh, signs, signs, around signs. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I will I give... Like, I, I, the, okay, what? I'll say this. And I liked the first half of the movie, because that was going to build up to something, you know, good. <laughs> um, he is, even in his crap films, always good at suspense. He has a Hitchcock... I think he's got a Hitchcock... The, the scene with the door, where the alien's trap behind the door... See, the problem with those scenes is... They You're right, there, there was no payoff, but, but the build-up wasn't yeah, that bad. The build-up is always great, and the, the problem is they don't work when you think about it. But in the moment, it's great. You're there, you're terrified. The, putting it on a farm with the, the signs appearing in his cornfield, with the, the creatures scurrying about... It was terrifying. It was done really well. And you don't know what they are, and you don't know what's going on. When it's revealed they're aliens at first, I liked it. It's only where it just, it starts to unravel in the end. When he tries to tie it all together and they're allergic to water and so they invade a planet that's two-thirds ocean. And well, they, and it, it, you know, now the kids talk right, now the, the adults talk right, but, which was the biggest distraction for me, I was actually even willing to buy See, the, I thought uh, it was some, I see, to me that didn't, it bothered me way less than in science because they're a very troubled family living in the middle of nowhere. Like, they all... I just took it on... I just took it on faith. <laughs> that was going somewhere. That they were all weird. So it didn't bother me. I'm just like, all right, these are just weird farm folk. Well, you like, know, <laughs> here, here's what's so funny. People are always like, how can Shyamalan say he was influenced by Kubrick and Hitchcock and all that? It is oh, everywhere. Yeah, easily. Uh, you know, but he, again, it is kind of like in Battlefield Earth, how that one director had everything at an angle, and he saw the good directors have tilted angles, but he didn't know why. It's the same thing here. Shyamalan knows there are shots, there's directors that use shots that go on for a very, very long time without a cut. He knows there are good directors that have very slow moving and these long pauses and stuff. Are and you talking about the one at the win. table? And that's the first that, one that turned to my oh, mind. There's a I lot of movies where he shot. does it. But yeah, there is... Nothing suspenseful is going on there, and if you're trying to create this uncomfortable sense, it's like, it, it's not he shoots the time it. yet. He's shooting it like freaking. D- Dave and his other uh, astronaut partner talking in front of Hal or something like it's supposed to be this suspenseful scene, but nothing's and going nothing's on. Nothing's happening. Yeah, and it's not meant to be a suspenseful scene. It's supposed to be a nice. So why scene. are you doing it? Uh, you know, and what I think what he's missing is that both Kubrick and Hitchcock created this environment uh, that they clearly had a handle on. You can like it or not like it, I totally understand. Yeah. But they clearly had a handle on it, and with this one, he clearly doesn't. He's trying to mimic well, he these does moves when that he, he saw. He does when he wants to, but you're right in that it's just so much excess that it, it's sort of, it's like having all of these tools at your disposal, and instead of knowing the right point to use them, he takes the one tool he knows really well how to build suspense with the cinematography, and just uses it in everything. I think so. Yeah. After a while, like it just starts, and that's part of the tedium and boredom of his films is his cinematography is so pretty, but also at the exact same. It's like a paradox. It's insanely gorgeous to look at while being simultaneously monotonous as fuck. See, I don't even. You know, I, I used to like looking at, it, and I used to like getting sucked into the kind of cinematography that they were doing, but. I don't know. Looking back now, I think because it has been ruined so much uh, and done so much, you know, it, it's kind of dull to look at. Now, some of the wide angle shots are cool, um, well, it's, but, you but know even what it then, is, they're just not as interesting anymore. It's like, it's like taking art classes all your life, and the only things you're shown are Da Vinci's. Yeah, they could be gorgeous, stunning, one of the greatest geniuses ever. But if that's you're gonna get sick of it after a while. If that's all you see your entire life, you know, or growing up in school for eighteen years, you're gonna get sick of it. It's the same thing here. I think it's gorgeous. I think it's pretty to look at. I think he knows how to frame a shot. He knows how to do it right. He has the technical skill, but it's all he does. Yeah. Like, and after a while, when you just see it again and again and again, it just gets monotonous. There's just little variety in it. I think when I see something like Kubrick or Hitchcock, um, and like I said, you don't have to like their style. I mean, I, I totally understand, but whenever I see their stuff, I don't get a feeling of, well, this person is trying to mimic this or create a style or be, this is just how 
they want to do it because they're kind of fucking nuts, especially Kubrick. I love Kubrick, but he was fucking insane. And see, when I see Shyamalan, yeah. I see him. I, I want see... my style, style. This is my style. This is my. This is what I do. This is my style. Notice but, it. Notice it. But the funny thing is, I don't even associate it with Shyamalan. I associate it with Kubrick. I associate with some yeah, of later Kubrick Spielberg. Light. With I associate it with all of the other directors that he's mimicking because he's so desperate to create his own style and use these techniques again and again to prove something that I end up not seeing his style. Mm -hmm. I end up seeing all the other styles he's using. Well, you know, like, in, Un in Unbreakable, there's a scene where he's being told that he's the only survivor, and in the f it's not one shot in the foreground, you see the other guy, the one other survivor, dying, and you see blood coming from the bandage, and it's such a... It it's beautifully composed, and it's brilliantly done, because you can see he's being told this news, and he's both sort of like being reborn and he's dying at the same time. It's just this uncomfortable feeling and it really works. It works in the story. And now I'm sort of wondering, was that even like in his mind when he's putting it together or was it just, well, this is uh, kind of cool. This is my style. This is my thing. There's a lot of things in the foreground. There's also in the background. It's a really, really long shot. It's like now I'm starting to wonder, was that even there when he's putting it together? And I hate when I do that with a filmmaker because you think there's, I mean, you can still get that from it and that's what I get from it. But there is something almost kind of heartbreaking when it's like, you know, were you even kind of aware of that or thinking that when you put something together that actually worked really well? You know, maybe it's not heartbreaking the more I think about it, because it's still there and it still works. Uh, even if you don't like that movie, I mean, that, that I, was a good I, shot. I still say, you know, like, I still love the first half of Signs. Hmm. You know, the issue is, it, it's just kind of a movie, the, the movie actually doesn't even need a twist. That's the problem with it. And this has his, been his problem ever since. It's like, we need to have a twist. They're allergic to water! And that whole twist fucks around with the whole story. One well, that's from, you know, uh, not Dangerous Twist, um, War of the Worlds, obviously. You know, they took it from that. Something innocuous that we take yeah, for granted. Something simple, and... yeah. I mean, it's been done a million times. But it, but... Made, but it made much more sense in War of the Worlds than it ever does here. No, it, it actually um, makes total logical sense in War of the Worlds. I mean, they just they couldn't pretend. And nobody would have thought of it, you know. I mean, water, it's like, <laughs> the fucking planet! It's, the planet is saying, we will kill you just with what we're covered with. It's amazing. <laughs> I mean, that's part of this. I think that's this movie's biggest problem is it's science fiction. Hmm. He may have been able to get away with this if he did this like the village without its stupid twist. Mm. Um, when that one, I actually figured out by we watching the We both figured it out. Yeah, no, I remember because you said, Christ. well, I found out what the twist is and I already guessed it. I was like, wait, is it this? And you're like, yeah. yeah. I was like, we got it. We didn't even have to see the movie. <laughs> yeah. So, but he may have been better off by, because the problem is when you do science fiction, you have to have some science in it. And if your science is bullshit, it's not going to work. Like, you have to have some Basic kind yeah, of science. Yeah, just very basic. And the idea I mean, that they can't get through the wooden door, that they, you know, are allergic to water but land on a planet like this, you know, the the very idea again that it's, aha, aliens, what is their big plan? They want to harvest humans. Like, Jesus Christ, can we get past that? Even when Pacific Rim and Independence Day were doing it, I'm like, God! They at least have something else that can stand on. See, here's the thing, too. It's clearly trying to create... A suspense. I love Pacific Rim too. Oh yeah, was, no, no, I, I love yeah, it too. Pacific but... Rim's amazing, but that was the only thing that bugged me. Is how many well, that... the Independence Day plot again? Well, that's like that was clearly not. You know, that's not the focus, or you yeah. know, what draws you. But to in the this movie. case, it's the focus. No, but but even here, it's like if it, it's supposed well, it to be. To it's be supposed to feel focus. realistic. It's supposed yeah. to feel realistic, like you're in this house with these people. Uh, and it's constantly pulling you out with all these weird it destroys, choices. It destroys its own credibility. And the thing is, I'm wondering if this film wouldn't have been much better if he set it on a farm in late colonial times, and instead of aliens, they're just sort of, some sort of, like, demon things. In well, which, would be the village then. <laughs> well, in okay. where, no, in which that case, at least, there are no, you don't have to worry about the science of it, it's a supernatural story. Basically, if you want to kill them with something simple like water... Go ahead, like, there's no, like, you don't have the same problems you do here. You know, instead, he, he does the village, which looks like a supernatural story, and then, you know, and, and, and then he does pulls the rug out from under you, because what does, he tweets. They does the fantasy with Lady in the Water, and that clearly oh. didn't work. Um, yeah, I think, like, if he had done it like that and removed the science fiction aspect of it, I think it would have worked a lot better. You had the same setup, terrified, you're alone, isolated on a farm. All of the best things that worked, worked without the science involved. Well, I think it's one of the, the reasons. The first half of that sense. movie, there's zero science. You, you, you may not entirely know they're aliens, except for the fact that it's crop circles. But well, I was going to say, that might be the reason Sixth Sense worked as well, why he wrote Ghosts. 
so well was because we don't know how they worked. We know we've heard stories and somebody's, you know, usually we know someone or you yourself come across something supernatural that might be a ghost, but we don't know how they work. So in something like The Sixth Sense, they can pop up whenever they want. You can see them whenever they want. Well, because we don't know the rules, but that's taken off of what we've seen in real and this life. Is the and big, feeds and this the is fear. the big difference. And this is why Unbreakable, for me, does not work. And why I think signs may have bothered you to some degree. I don't know why you give Unbreakable the pass, but... When it comes to the way they act, because that is the only thing in the Shyamalan film I feel as stylistically is. <laughs> their inability to act, um, or at least to have normal human conversations that don't sound like pre-programmed robots uh, that draw things out for like 30 minutes. Um, the Sixth Sense and The Village take place in a world where the supernatural at least seems to exist, and there's this aura of death everywhere. And in the well, I mean, in the case of the Sixth Sense, we know why. It's a bunch of dead people talking to each other. Um, so that funeral home aspect, and that's whenever I describe Shyamalan's acting style uh, of his actors, I always say it's funeral home acting. <laughs> it's you're very quiet and you're very. Soft that's one of the reasons I liked Unbreakable because I felt that was kind makes, of warranted. No, for make, the most makes part. no sense in Unbreakable. Zero. Like, no, like, Bruce Willis, to some degree, may talk like that post in shock, but everybody else, though, I don't get it. But in science, it's the same issue. To some degree, I give them a little bit of a pass that they're on a farm and maybe they're weird, but everybody else talks like that. Mm. Um, the Village, though, and The Sixth Sense, I think, are the only two that they work somehow, because, and this may be Shyamalan's secret, if he can ever figure this out for his fucking self, is... Write supernatural stories, write stories with ghosts, write stories where it makes sense why they would talk like they're in a funeral. <laughs> um, and I think The Village, up until its stupid twist, and The Sixth Sense did that. Like, he made that weird style of directing he has actually work to his advantage. Whereas I think all the other films he's done, it works to his disadvantage. Because The Village, I'm just going to be honest, for me, it's a pretty decent movie up until it blows itself up. I've never seen the whole thing. I hear a lot of people say, like, you know, actually it's out of his bad films, it's kind of like the least bad, but it's still bad. Much like Signs, for me, it's a film that it could have been saved if he had somewhere to go with it. And the, the twist completely destroys it. Mm. And you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, um, you know, the, the, there's two things I'll say that I guess kind of three, but they feed into each other, uh, that I do like in this film. And one is, like, you were talking about the buildup of the suspense, but they never have a good payoff. And I guess that leads to number two, which is the scene with the video camera where it's like, you know, we, we have seen, you know, I actually like that like, scene. I, I know love, you hate no, it. No, I love the buildup of that. I mean, the buildup of that was, although that's like one of the early, like, sort of found footage scares in a sense. Like, oh my god, like, this feels... The kids are yelling at and it's well, shot like real handheld footage, and, and I'm like, actor, oh my god, what's I it going to be? It's just, when you see the okay. alien, he looks okay. ridiculous. Okay, um, but you're, okay, you're getting too wrapped up into the, the practical effects or, this, or the special effects shot there. Yes, it's not exactly the most scary looking No, no, but the buildup like is either. wonderful. But it's not only the buildup. His reaction of flipping the fuck out, watching the TV, that is the important thing to take away from that scene. I don't give a fuck what the alien looks like. His acting in that scene was amazing. Oh, Joaquin Phoenix? Or... Yeah, Joaquin Phoenix reaction of just flipping... Like... <laughs> that sold the terror of that scene more, because you're right. Whenever it pauses and I look at the thing, I'm like, it's not that scary. But his reaction makes it scary. And that's what a good haunted house film or monster movie or something does. It's about the terror in the people. And again, that's why I think the, the first half of this film was really fucking solid, and I just wish it went somewhere at the end, but... Well, I, I was going to say, too, the one thing... No, it, it ends like The Wizard of Oz, <clears throat> you know. The, the, the one other thing, on you know, as much as we like to, to dump on Gibson and everything, uh, I actually thought, for the most part, he did okay in this. The, the writing's not very good, but for what he had to work with, I, I thought he did okay, and there's a scene well, that... Well, I, I couldn't blame Gibson anyway, because I, I think it's firmly established now, no matter how good of an actor you are, Shyamalan will suck the life out of you. He literally is a soul Which is why it's so impressive when you find someone that does when you find someone that does it well. Yeah, so uh, someone that gets through one of his films in one piece, like, m my hat's off to them, because, like, good job. 
You uh, somehow made it out alive. But so I can't blame Gibson. I can't anybody. No, but I thought in this he was film. actually good. Yeah, for the most but part. I'm and saying it, even if even if you thought he was bad, I I couldn't blame him. Mm. Like I I can't blame Mark Wahlberg and the happening. I it's like who knows what Shaman's telling them is good or not. I would give anything to be a fly like on the wall during the happening and hear <laughs> Shyamalan say perfect after every Mark Wahlberg take and just hear what direction do, do your was right going. Now. What no. What? No, we're not. No! It's, it's, oh, it's beautiful. Uh, but, yeah, no, that's one of those things where it's like, I just love to know what, what, what did you tell him? Because he's a good actor. I mean, he's not great at everything, but it's like, yeah. he's pretty decent. I, it's I mean, the same with the Wachowskis. Many a great actor goes into a Wachowski film and somehow ends up turning Does not come out good up. anymore. And many bad go in yeah. and come out the exact same. Um, <laughs> and Luke, George Lucas, another great yeah. one. Um, um, those prequels, it's like, there were decent actors that went in there. No, but even some of them. Uh, uh, Ewan McGregor, actually, the Brits all came out fine. The yeah, more the, I think about the Brits Lee, fine. Ewan McGregor, uh, uh, the Emperor, I'm blanking his name. Ian uh, McDermott. Who's so over the top, but yeah. he's, he's perfect for that I part. This, I think his performance in Jedi is the best, but for pure clownishness, he was great in the prequels. Yeah. No, but, but even when he had to be like, you know, when he was the senator, like, he was okay. And then when he had to turn, when he got yeah, zapped, when he was the senator, then he's he like, okay, fine. now you're, um, you know, like, Lucas is like, you have to be really scary now, big, big, yeah. scary, so you're the some, monster. The point being, so... Uh, I give actors in Shyamalan films a pass. I can't be like, well, they're terrible actors. Oh, like, yeah, no. Oh, no, because I've seen them great I'm not going to dislike Samuel L. Jackson, it who's worked is, with both. <laughs> it is Shyamalan. Yeah. He, he just does this. They've he, been Shyamalized. Yeah. <laughs> Shyamalized. Um, he, he thinks this is somehow either how people talk or it's how he wants them to talk in this film, and it's weird. I don't <laughs> get it. It might be the Wachowski thing, too, where they think if they talk, like, really dead and really serious and stuff, it like, may you'll listen more. Because they've seen that in a lot of movies, a lot of older movies. It has worked in the past, but they have material to support yeah, it. Yeah, you have to have to a it. script that supports sounding serious. Because if you're going to go into your super serious sounding voice then you need to have a script that has something better than, you know, let's throw some water at it. Well, and, and, I, stand by there are, and I stand by there are actors uh, who just take that I'm going to talk serious the whole time and not be interesting. That somehow will make it interesting. And they do it way too much. I think Kevin Cotter is one of them. You know, Russell Crowe is one of them. But... But even with them, yeah, for I'm, them that's not the directors; that's no, their style. Yeah, yeah, but 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 even with that, like I always make the argument with Russell Crowe uh, in Master and Commander. Uh, I, I swear it's like his twin brother or something because he is just amazing in that he is so charming and so charismatic, and you are with him and you will follow him. And when he has to have the really serious moment, yeah. it's earned. It is completely earned, and you're like, wow. Great acting here. Like, I, 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 I like Kevin Costner and, and people like William Hurt in the right things. If they're in the right project where it supports that style of acting, they can get away with it, and I think it comes off really good. Mm. So I, I agree with you. Not every project, sometimes you watch a Kevin Costner performance, like, oh my god, would it kill you to have an emotion? Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so that's our, that's our take on Signs. Uh, if you like the movie, enjoy it. I... I look a little deeper into faith, though, that is, like, the one thing. Like, if it did sway you, okay, I mean, whatever, it's good to have faith, but, uh, look deeper into it. There, there is so much more interesting, complicated, and even more simplistic stuff that's I think is just amazing, and I don't think this film knows how to represent it, honestly. Um, but, but if it really did something for you and it set you in a certain direction, fair enough. Um, Great. Then, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I will say this, most people who say that, it's like, yeah, it was like a starting point for me, or a reconnecting, and that's, okay. I'm like, that's great, but they, the interesting thing is, it's a starting Starting point, point yes. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure I would consider this the grand thesis on faith, like, this is not yeah. the end point. Um, so, I, yeah, I, I like the first half of the movie a lot, I, I just felt the ending and stuff was a letdown, and I... Much like, and I give Unbreakable this, there's a good movie trying to come out somewhere, and I give signs that too, and even The Village, like, with all of those post Six Sense projects, outside of Lady in the Water and, with, and after that, with those three afterwards, there's a good movie trying to get out. Yeah, there's, well, like, even I, Devil, yeah. I mean, we always say, what a phenomenal concept, but then oh, you have to throw in The Devil, idea. it's like, yeah. god damn it! It's like, you could have had something, I mean, just fucking phenomenal here, and you had to throw in The Devil, and I know he just wrote that, but his fingerprints are clearly all over it. Oh no, even the way it's shot, yeah, his finger, like, 
maybe he produced it as well, because I, uh, whenever I look I, at that, I'm like, this looks like a Shyamalan movie. Definitely reads like a Shyamalan movie. But yeah, no, I agree. There's always, like, there's always good concepts there. And even when Lady in the Water went, say, like, we're going to try and tell you a fairy tale, it's like, well, that sounds kind of charming, actually. Like, a, an actual modern-day fairy tale that takes place in modern times with our buildings and everything, but has the fairy tale, tale feel. It's like... I would be very interested in that, and he just, it doesn't come through. Uh, so yeah, there's always, there's always the beginning, and even uh, After Earth, the idea of eradicating fear, like that's, you know, it doesn't make too much sense, but even for something that's, I think, meant for young adults, uh, like, that's an interesting idea, and you can have fun with that, and you can do interesting stuff, you, they don't, <laughs> but, you know, you could do something really interesting with that. Um, Maybe the Wachowskis and Shyamalan should team up. I would... Or would that be like the pay gate, to see that? Would that happen. be, would that be like curious. putting the gatekeeper and the key master together? I would still pay to see that. I could just see Egon now. I think that would be extraordinarily Can dangerous. you imagine their writing styles? I mean, just what happens when it's like, and on top of a force meets an immovable object. I mean, it's like. I, and we, and then we, Gozer we, the Traveler will come in the form of a giant swarm! We, we'll just get like the most boring movie ever with so much talking and so much not happening, and then just the most crazy batshit, what the hell were you thinking spurts? And, like, a minimum one batch of crazy performance, probably two now, because they'll be working together, and I would just, oh, that'd be incredible. Um, ooh, yeah, get Mark Wahlberg, and, uh, I don't know, who can we get from a Wachowski movie? Uh, who's that? Uh, oh. go! No, 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 Hugo Weaver. Yeah, oh, no, Hugo no, yeah, 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 yeah. No, the two, yeah, get those three together in a Shyamalan Wachowski movie, and, uh, let, let, we should do a Kickstarter for this. Just, like, hey, just, just to get them together. I was like, hey, you should, come on, you guys, you should do something together. We love your stuff. We're, we're not doing this just to see what an unbelievable train wreck it'll be. I mean, it's like, we'll pay for it. Come on, we got a Kickstarter. Come on, come on. Ubi Balls went great. The um, Unbreakable Matrix Ascending. <laughs> <laughs> we, we should do this. Uh, yeah. The six That's... unbreakable matrix. <laughs> you know what? Let's get writing. Get on it. No, oh, no, there's no writing we could do to, to make it like this. Oh, no, Even though just... we could get some bad stuff going. No, no, we just need to, like, put together a treatment and then email it to them. And they'll be like, let's do it! But I didn't come up with it. We'll say you came up with it. Let's do it! <laughs> Excellent. <sighs> we got a plan. No, we don't. No, you're right. This sucks.